Today, I'll introduce to you the movie called The Unholy. A deaf-mute girl suddenly could speak. She proclaimed that she had been cured by the Virgin Mary. Her claim attracted an unscrupulous reporter, who didn't hesitate to make false news to hype up his reputation. His name was Gerald. That day, he received the news and came to a religious town. A farmer said that on his cattle's backs, strange totems appeared. They were suspected as Satanists. That sounded interesting. Gerald went to have a look. In fact, the farmer's son was obsessed with the metal band, so he trimmed the cow's fur to have the band's symbol. Didn't he come in vain? A crow caught his attention. It was standing under a crooked neck tree. Gerald leaned over to have a look. There was a hole under the root of the tree and a little doll buried in the hole. Locals called it a corn doll, a symbol of good luck. But this doll was very different. It was chained and had a brand on it, which was written with a date that didn't exist, February 31st, 1845. Gerald had a plan. He smashed the doll and made up a story, saying the doll was an ancient curse. Now it was broken. The locals started to carry out a mysterious cattle slaughtering ceremony, that was it. His job was done. Gerald rubbed up and drove back. Who would have thought that later that night, a woman suddenly flashed in front of the car. Gerald ducked into a tree. He was all right. When he saw the woman's strange behavior, he quickly followed her. In the middle of the night, she knelt under the crooked neck tree and recited some words. Gerald tried to touch her but she fainted. Ha, sticky bag, Gerald had to send her home. This girl's name was Alice. She was the priest's niece. She had been raised by a priest since her parents died. The point was, she was deaf. Gerald understood in an instant. Deaf mute, wasn't she listening to her at all the whole way home? Though he didn't believe it, he thought it was good news. The next day, he came to church. A few days later, something unusual happened. Alice suddenly heard someone call. She walked out to take a look. At this time, other girls in the church seemed to be cursed, lining up and following her out. Everyone felt strange and hurried to follow them. They came to the crooked neck tree. Alice suddenly spoke. She told the crowd that she was summoned by a woman named Maria. Everyone was overjoyed at the news. Maria, was that the Virgin Mary? After examination, Alice did recover her hearing and language ability. The news quickly spread all over the town. It was believed that the Virgin Mary came to Alice, curing her illness. Alice's house was quickly surrounded. Some disabled people who also wanted to be cured gathered up. Gerald was also in it to prepare his filming equipment. The priest wanted to protect his niece. He didn't want Alice to come out by herself, so he led the crowd to the crooked neck tree. After Maria's brief conversation, she came to a paralyzed little boy, asking him, do you believe in Maria? Maria ordered you to take two steps forward. The boy tried to lift the blanket. He did it. He recovered. It was so shocking. People knelt and thanked frantically. The statue of the Virgin Mary in the church shed two blood tears. After that, Gerald's news shocked the outside world. Both the local and the Vatican had sent bishops to investigate the authenticity of the news. As soon as Alice went out, the reporters rushed up. The hasty questions made Alice stunned. Finally, Gerald had to be observant. Alice answered the questions just right. Then Gerald took advantage of it to convince the two bishops to let him follow the whole process to make an exclusive record. Alice had a good chat with him. He wanted to interview her, but unexpectedly, the Virgin Mary saw through Gerald's past and passed the words through Alice. She was willing for Gerald to report on it because her words could also be publicized. It was a win-win situation. Gerald was a little shocked. Just then the priest came. He didn't want Alice to be interviewed because he knew that the so-called miracle must be a double-edged sword. Most people who had been exposed to miracles in the past had suffered misfortune. God was always followed by evil. Gerald was not discouraged. After that, Alice had gained the ability to talk. The priest began to teach her to sing hymns. As a result, he fell to the ground with emphysema halfway through the teaching, on the verge of dying. Alice rushed over and asked him three questions. Do you believe in Maria? Are you sad about her story? Will you serve her wholeheartedly? The priest nodded. With a wave of her hand, the priest was saved in an instant. The lesions disappeared completely. The two bishops confirmed that there was a miracle. Once the authentication message was sent, it immediately detonated the network. Countless people followed Alice. Some town residents chose to leave because they think God should stay in heaven. Once he went down to earth, there would be a disaster. The local government had decided to build an altar. This altar would play an important role in driving the town economy. Because of the viral report, Gerald gained a place in the newspaper. But no one knew that the moment when Alice saved the priest, the priest saw a terrible shadow on her. He kept thinking about it and went through the church's past archives. As a result, he discovered the truth. But now, his every move was seen by a figure hiding in the dark. On the other side, Gerald was eating in town. He happened to meet a doctor. This doctor was the one who diagnosed Alice before. She had a good relationship with Alice and was an acquaintance with Gerald. They got together and chatted away. Gerald remembered that in his first visit to town, he had dug up a corn doll. He told the doctor. The doctor explained that generally, the doll was used to imprison evil spirits, so people wrote a date that didn't exist so that the evil spirits could never escape. Huh? Was that so? Do you know what was wrong with it? These two people regard this statement as an urban legend, but they didn't take it seriously. 
They went for a walk along the river in the town. They didn't know if they were walking round and round. Gerald saw a ghost in the water. Gerald began to realize that something had happened here before, but he was a little late. Someone from the church came to confess, the priest listened to them. He didn't expect that the one who confessed there was the so-called Maria. The priest quickly came out of the booth. He saw Maria stand in the aisle. She was a masked evil spirit. Just then, Gerald came to investigate. He found the priest's body. The evil spirit had hanged him on the ground. The priest was considered committed suicide. Gerald didn't think it was that simple. He found Alice and wanted to ask her if there was any possibility it was evil spirits. But Alice completely believed in Maria now. She insisted that it had nothing to do with Maria. Shit, so you'd rather believe. Your uncle committed suicide against his faith, didn't he? Gerald didn't give up. He went back to the guest room to check the interview video. It turned out that when Alice listened to Maria, an evil spirit flashed by her ear. In addition to the illusion he saw before and the priest's death, Gerald started to doubt. He quickly asked the doctor to take him to see the church archives. He found the truth that the priest had discovered. It was as early as 1845, there was a girl in the town who had been exposed to miracles. She also claimed to be connected to the Virgin Mary and tell people that, as long as you believe in her, she will heal you. But if you doubt her, you won't be able to be cured. Finally, people found that the girl was not connected to Maria at all. She was serving Satan. So the town residents began to fight back, nailing the girl with Maria's mask and drowning her in the river. Then they hung her on a crooked neck tree and burned her. Finally, her ashes and soul were imprisoned in the corn doll. The doll Gerald crushed and the girl's name happened to be Mary. Her full name was Mary Elna. She was the Maria who called Alice, not the Virgin Mary at all. But the evil spirit of Mary Elna who once believed in Satan now wanted to deceive the souls of believers in the name of the Virgin Mary. The priest was killed when he found out the truth. The evil spirit must be raised through the body of his descendants. The evil spirit not only stepped into her mind but also controlled her words. Gerald said he would hold a fan meeting. Gerald and the doctor were soon attacked by the evil spirit. But fortunately, he escaped from its pursuit. Gerald cancelled the interview on the spot, finding the bishop and trying to stop the evil spirit. But the landlord had already found out about it. Considering the abuse of lynching in the church in the past, it would be exposed. In addition, it could promote the development of local tourism, so he chose to hide the truth away. He not only didn't help but also got in the way. He couldn't cancel the meeting directly now. Fortunately, the bishop of the Vatican was a sensible man. They tried to prepare to seal the evil spirit again. The bishop lit the flame and said it represented God. It was blown out by the evil spirit. The bishop didn't give up. He continued. After two times, the flame brush turned into a raging flame, lighting the cross, smashing it down and burning the bishop. The statue of Jesus on one side also shed blood tears. The situation was worsened, but the fan meeting on the other side had begun. Gerald's quick-witted, this belief is most afraid of doubt. We just need to make everyone suspicious of Alice. So they rushed to the scene. Gerald revealed that he made all the fake news. The doctor told Alice on the stage in sign language. No, the Virgin Mary is disguised by evil spirits. Fight her. Seeing that everyone was instigated by Gerald, they became suspicious. Alice finally woke up and told everyone, hey, I was just fooling around. Faith collapsed, and the cured disease relapsed again. The evil spirit appeared. The crowd scattered and fled. The local bishop was the first to be killed. Then the evil spirit pounced on Gerald. But it didn't expect Alice to come forward, blocking the fatal hit for Gerald and died on the spot. The evil spirit killed her only descendant, so she also disappeared. Though the evil spirit was dead, Gerald was a little excited, Alice's death made him upset. Gerald, who did not believe in God, prayed to God. Just save her, Alice woke up, wasn't it amazing, so at last, a peaceful life was restored in the town. Just when people thought it was over, the statue of the Virgin Mary in the church shed blood tears again. Throughout the film, the statue of the Virgin Jesus bled and wept several times. When evil spirits had the upper hand, did that mean that the one resurrected wasn't Alice but the evil spirit? The film was over here. The story tells us, authenticity was the life of news. They blindly pursue traffic and focus, and do not hesitate to violate professional ethics to create false news. The adverse effects it has caused can't undo any way you like. That's all for today. I'm Harry. I'll see you next time.